So, we're back in, we're looking at our great counselors doing their work. Our wife is pregnant and uh, her pregnancy has made her much more talkative and cheerful. That's nice. But our scholars agree that a pregnant woman should spend as much time as possible resting. Now, we could go ahead and tell her to go rest, which increases her health. Or we let her have her fun, which possibly leads to a failed pregnancy. But since we don't want any more heirs, we're going to throw caution to the wind and um, not pretend like we're not hoping for her to have an issue with her pregnancy. Now, <laughs> my wife can never really stop chatting with courtiers and staff. If nothing else, this new habit of hers has made her much more comfortable and skilled at talking. If only we could have some quiet every once in a while. Well, okay, so these tabs on our character information are really interesting. We're now, right now we have one vassal who is a bishop and he pays taxes. To someone. We're going to modify what he pays in a second. Now who does he pay taxes to? Either the Pope, because he's a Catholic, or his liege, which is us. Now, <laughs> since we're an adulterer, he doesn't like us very much. Actually, we have a double malice on him, just for being an adulterer, and since he is a man of the cloth, it's even worse. Um, but he likes us more than the Pope, which is great, so he's going to pay his taxes to us. We could increase how much he pays, which probably we should do. So we're going to look for the church, and since he's the only vassal we have, we're going to modify only what he has to do. Church levies, they do give a certain amount of trips, but 22, that's not much. He's not going to send many troops into battle with us. So it's not really sensible to increase his levies, unless, of course, increasing his obligations decreases his opinion of us, but it doesn't. So let's give 10% more and lose some levy with him. So we'll switch this. And now if we check again on our vessel, this will be a little bit more in a moment. There we go, because it's on 40%. So. It did have a negative impact, but it didn't tell us before. So it's fortunate that the ne negative impact didn't really sway his opinion. Now, what we could do, instead of swaying our neighbor to our cause, we could actually go ahead and sway him to be more friendly toward us. Which sounds much more sensible because we need his opinion to be high of us. So we earn some money. Uh, if we look at this, Actually, we're not looking at this there, but we're going to go for our realm overview. The church tax is actually our most income. So losing his income would be problematic for us. So it's really important that we have a good relationship with him. Now, okay, our wife has become gloomy. We could buy her something with all the gold we have, which would increase her health and give her a chance to become charitable or... No, it's us a chance to become charitable. But honestly, we don't have the money. I'm sorry, love. I will lose some piety over you. And I will deal with it. Now, if we weren't using our diplomat to fabricate a claim, we could send him here to improve relationship with people here. But he is our diplomat, so increasing our relationship with our diplomat doesn't really work out. He can't dec increase his own relationship with us. It's not happening. Right. So he has raised retinues. I'm not sure. It is probably cavalry retinues. Ooh. Another son has been born to us. So here's another heir, which now is likely problematic. He's our backup heir. But should we gain another title, our realm might splinter between our children, which isn't all that great. So we can give him a name, 
randomize it, name him after his father, after the grandfather, or some random ancestor. Which is pretty cool, I think. Um, let's leave the name as it is. But also set a focus. And we don't want him to be a military genius. Ideally, we want him to be not that great, but also not so bad if he becomes our heir. So either go for diplomacy or something uh, more business related. And of course, we're going to try and find us another pact, another alliance out there. So, Osmond. Osmond is a little bit far away. Let's see. Can't we have a betrothal with you? Nope. A betrothal with you, maybe? See, looking manually for these is a little bit hard. Because often you don't find anything. Later in the game it becomes easier as more children are born. But for now, this is a little bit hard, so we just go through the screen. And... Suri... Suri is here. Where's Orc, anyway? Do not see Orc on the map. Who or what is Orc? Are you Orc? No. Burgundy... Fidach... Insi Orc... Let's actually go with age here. Someone young. Anglo-Saxon. Well, let's take her. She's attractive. So that's not the worst trait to have. And for now, we just want as many alliances as we can have. Because they're going to break eventually anyway. But all of these are going to be really important for us. As a tradition, my wife, Aibelin, underwent her churching after recovering and cleansing herself from the recent pregnancy. Unfortunately, her mood was not improved by taking the Holy Communion. Perhaps some old sin is still weighing on her soul, says the sinner. <laughs> I don't have an option to help her, so she must deal with it on her own. And there's our fourth alliance. Now, why are these important? Because if we look around, none of these has an alliance. They have a lot of non-aggression pacts, but no one is going to come help them doing war. Us, on the other hand, we have people ready to fight in our name. And not just when we attack, but also when we defend. So alliances are an absolute key in early gameplay. They don't become less important later on, but it changes with whom you want to have alliances. So my beloved Stech. Setach, Setach, I don't know how to pronounce this, is suffering from her bad marriage with Dungus. Well, with a name like that. Perhaps I should suggest a romantic retreat to the countryside, just the two of us, and our most trusted retainers. Well, I mean, this child has already fallen into the well, so... Let's see her. My lover Setach declined my suggestion. That we spend some time together. For fear upsetting. Oh, our romance is declining. Such a wasted opportunity indeed. Especially since the Irish countryside is so lovely. See all those cauliflowers. <laughs> Unripe yet. Okay, so another commander has died of old age. Let's see if we can't find someone good. Again, reset. Load. Ooh. A group of hedge knights have come to visit Umu Hain. Bishop Gersigas had met with them and asked for my reply. We can welcome to our lavish feast because we are gregarious, which is a good trait to have. But it costs us some gold. We can afford it. 
So let's gain some prestige and lose some gold. The Hedge Knights have participated in a minor tournament together with our knights in Ulmerheim. Sadly, from one of those landless vagabonds has been severely injured. Okay, we can pay some gold and have him helped. Let's do that. And let's get this guy to come to our court and be our new commander. You could have them out to assign, but the game doesn't make great decisions on that front. All right, our attempts to sway him to become our friend have not been in vain. We have already gotten something. Uh, where where do we get it? Let's see. Actually, I don't see a modifier for it yet. But it'll come. It'll come around. As long as he keeps paying us taxes, we're all good. That is what is important. Now, our own holding is, is done. Which is great. We could build a Galaglass training ground for 100 prestige. There's a reason we're not going to do it. Because we want 500 prestige before we do anything else. Why? Because when we go to war, there's going to be the option to raise a tribal army, which costs 500 prestige, but it's going to be a strong one with 2,500 infantry. So that's really strong. We're trying not to spend prestige before we reach 100. 100 is our zero. Uh, 500 is our zero, I'm sorry. So... What we're going to do is we're going to buy some red news, actually. So, <laughs> I am a little bit wrong. We're going to spend some of it because we want red new troops. Because those are really, really strong. We have a choice here between the light cavalry and light infantry or light infantry and heavy infantry. Now, cavalry is always going to beat anything else, really. So... Heavy infantry is really good as well, because we're surrounded by tribes, but 50 heavy infantry are going, not going to make much of a difference compared to 50 light cavalry, so that's what we're going to get. Now, these are going to stand here and slowly build up. As you can see, they have 1 and 0 morale. It's a red bar here. Morale is really important, because that determines how well they fight when they fight. And how easily they break. Warfare, which is fun in this game, is quite realistic. It wasn't really about killing the enemy, it was breaking them. Causing them to rout and run. A routed army doesn't, help, uh, doesn't hold you back. Now, we set how much they will reinforce. And that determines how much the reinforcement of them costs. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, yeah it says up here. Reinforcing retinues that we bought for prestige cost prestige to reinforce. So let's check. We are losing 0 0.53, but we're still gaining plus 2.13 because we're building our legend. So that is really good. So we can reinforce them on the strongest level. If you were feudal, for example, it was, would cost you gold to rebuild your retinue. So al already, prestige is much easier to come by early in game, especially as a tribe. So, red news for tribes are much easier. You're going to wait a long, long time as a fuel to have red news that are worth mentioning. So, these are good. They're just going to stand here. We could set them to raiding. As you can see, they have morphed into a horse because now there's a horse unit in there. Okay, this guy here has two red new units, not just one. My lover Setach is with child. It wasn't even us. She didn't come to our retreat. Now, we are leading our own army here. Which isn't the worst idea because we are an aggressive leader. And we have a high martial skill. But if we go to war, we might want to reconsider that. Because there's a high likelihood of us dying. 
in war. Now he only has one retinue. If we check him, he's going to have a lot of troops. He has. But we're not far behind. A little bit, but not too far. Now, I'm wondering if I'm reconsidering the prestige stance, but probably not. We'll keep it. Not going to spend it. Okay. Right, so the betrothed can marry. Oh, look. Apparently, some things have changed a little bit. I thought she was betrothed to someone else. Who are you? Oh, my courtier. Alright, does, doesn't matter. She is just a courtier of mine, so she can, she can go away. Doesn't matter. But, our daughter can marry now. And we are definitely going to have her married. Now he, our kinsman, has grown a little bit. As you can see, we're not going to get any deals out of marrying him, so who cares? Our daughter's marriage should push our prestige up, which it did quite high. Gave us 200 prestige because that's just the kind of gal she is. Now let's check our pacts. There's nothing new because we already had the pact running. And... We fulfilled his marriage wish, so he's happy. Which also would have worked with our friend here, as you can see. Fulfilled his marriage wish, but yeah, we kind of screwed that up too. Let's marry him. See if there's someone his age. See, early in the game, this is weird. You have either really, really young kids or really old women. <laughs> Let's marry them. Oh. Can't we marry her? To someone closely related to us? Ah, well. Let's just wait it out. There's probably going to be more kids on the way. Or she might die. Actually, we might want to have her dead. So we can marry the emperor daughter. So, ah, there's no plot to kill our wife, so we have to plot it manually. Hello, love. Um, there. All right, so. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, this time he thinks is his. It should be his too. If we plot to murder our wife, we are taken to this, the intrigue screen, where the plots are. Now, we have a 66% plot power, which just means we have a 66% chance of the plot beginning and working. We could increase this by inviting people to help with our plot. No one here except for her. Our lover, she's very keen on helping us kill our wife, so... We're going to invite her to the plot. She's going to help. Alright. Perhaps I should use my extensive military knowledge to impress Bishop Galesius into liking me more. So let's check him. We could use our traits to sway him. We have a lot of martial, so let's talk strategy with him. Now... There are some considerations. Ah, he liked it. So we have a plus 10 opinion from him. Right. So she will back our plot to kill our wife. There are some considerations in inviting people. We could pay off someone else to help. Like the guys who are kind of on the fence of helping. You can send them a gift. And then they're going to help. Why would we want it or why wouldn't we? Every backer who's part of the plot increases the chance of the plot being revealed or failing. 
So, you need to keep the group tight. You wouldn't want too many people involved in killing someone. Or planning to kill someone. It will take a while until we get a chance to kill her. But that's fine. 